Hello and welcome to Brockton Community Access's coverage of the September 19th preliminary election here in the City of Champions. We're starting out with Ward 6. There are three candidates running in Ward 6. Um, John Drusinskis, Joanne Zygmunt, and Jack Lally. Um, joining me tonight on the panel are Steve Foote, the former chair of the Democratic City Committee, but announcement, he's now an unenrolled voter or independent voter. Shana Barnes, city councilor at large, who is not running for re-election. Shane is a Democrat and works for Congressman Stephen Lynch. So we are going to start out the debate tonight uh, first with, um, in order, we did a drawing, you know, good old scientific drawing out of a baseball hat. And uh, the person that drew first for the open is uh, Jack Lally. Jack, you have a minute to do your opening statement. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Jack Lally. I'm uh, the current city councilor for Ward 6. I want to start off by thanking everyone who voted for me uh, in the last election in 2015 uh, you know, for your support and for giving me this opportunity. I feel we've made you know, good progress and I feel like this term has had a positive impact on not just the ward but the city of Brockton. And I would ask for your continued support and your vote once again September 19th and November 7th. Really tried to focus on you know, all issues that have come across the council's uh, radar and that have happened in the ward, but also infrastructure, public safety, and fiscal responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Um, next up would be Joanne. Hello, Oops. my name is Joanne Zygmunt, running for Ward 6 City Council. Um, I have a long background in nonprofit and business development. And I feel like what we need on the city council and for our ward in particular is some new and creative ideas that maybe are a little bit untraditional. Um, and I feel like I can bring that to, for Ward 6 to the city council. Um, thank you everybody for hosting me, having me here this evening. Thank you, Mark. I'm excited to be here. Um, ward 6 has been my home for over 30 years. Um, grew up in the village, now live closer to the Bookfield School. Um, I went and um, got a BA in political science and a master's in urban development. So I feel like those things as well I'll be bringing to the city council. Um, and we'll be talking about the issues this evening. We're probably going to touch on development, which is a big issue for me, making sure residents have a say in that. Um, money and transparency is a big thing for me too. Um, and I'm sure we'll cover all of that. Thank you. Okay. And uh, John Drusinskis. Thank you, Mark. And, uh I also like to echo my my opponents. Uh, thanks for hosting this uh, this event. Uh, my name is John Drusinskis. I'm also running for Ward Six Councilor. I am a uh, lifelong uh, resident of Ward Six, uh, the Village section of Ward Six, a longtime homeowner. I'm a retired retail store manager. I can put 100% of my free time into this um, into this job, and it is a full-time job, despite what people think. Um, there's a lot involved with it. Um, I think uh, we need better representation in our ward. Um, I don't believe we've had that the past two years. I think um, my background uh, both in volunteerism and in community involvement and my life experience speaks well for uh, the qualifications for this job. So um, I respectfully ask for your vote September 19th and hopefully uh, beyond that on the general election on November 7th. Thank you all for the opening statement. So I'm gonna start right, we'll get right to the questions and the first question will come from Steve Foote. Okay, uh, as you're all aware, I'm a 60 year resident of Ward 6 and uh, even though you're running it for the Ward 6 council seat, most of your votes are gonna be taken on issues that affect the city as a whole. So I do have a couple of questions about Ward 6, but I do have some questions about the city as a whole, and I'm going to start with one of them. Would you vote to ignore federal law and make Brockton a sanctuary city? Why or why not? Okay, and I'm going to start in the reverse order that I did um, from the uh, opening statement. So that would be um, John first. Okay, sanctuary city, Steve, uh, is, is a federal issue as far as I'm concerned. And... Uh, to bring illegal immigrants into the city uh, does not bode well for us. Um, you know, there's, there's the possibility of added crime. Um, I would probably at this time vote no for a sanctuary city. Um, and that would be my reasoning. Um, you know, bringing 
illegal uh, illegal aliens into the city. Uh, some of them maybe uh, have a criminal background. I would probably uh, I would probably vote no. Okay. Next would be um, let's see. I did one, two, three. So I'm going to have Jack do second. All right. I am a no on that. The issue came up while I was counselor, uh, and you know I've got I've gotten many many calls from Ward Six residents, unanimously opposed to the matter. Uh, it's not something the ward wants, and truth be told, it's not something I want either. We risk increased crime. We guarantee the collapse of the city's government through you know just a complete withdrawal of funds under this president. Uh, the school department would lose upwards of twenty million dollars immediately and if you can save three million dollars by shutting down a school imagine how much money you know ima imagine imagine how much cutbacks and how much losses we would be hit with the issue is you know it's it belongs at the federal level you know it, do it doesn't belong at this level but if it does come in front of us I'm voting no thank you all Okay, uh, I'm sorry, Joanne. Joanne. Let me. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead, Joanne. Uh, my vote would be a no as well. Um, I believe that anything that jeopardizes the financial stability of the city is something that the city council is responsible for voting no on, um, and therefore, because as Jack's pointed out, we could lose federal funding. Um, I would vote no on that issue. Okay. No follow-up required. I think we got that. Everybody is a no. So let's go to Shana's first question. Thank you, and thank you, candidates. Um, I do have a question, and I come from a different perspective. Being a, a current counselor, I've actually seen the work that Councillor Lally has done in Ward 6. So I wanted to ask, I guess, focusing this question on um, Mr. Jusinskis and Ms. Zygut? Zygmunt. I apologize. Okay. We're going to have to do that again. Um, so with McKinley Park, particularly. So um, you all, I'm sure, are aware of the funding that um, Council Valley has just secured from the Patriots organization, uh, the Craft organization, to uh, add some different apparatus in there, some other state funding, just for the general redevelopment of that particular park. Um, what would you do different to the design of the park? Um, it, it, question, I guess, one. Question 1A is, do you think the design now is an open, friendly, welcoming uh, kind of design for the residents of Wood 6. Okay, I'm going to start with Joanne. Uh, I think there's a lot more we can do with that park. Um, I grew up in that park, um, played basketball very, very poorly in that park. Um, but I think that in addition to the new basketball court that's there, um, I think that, and the PlayStation, I guess you would call it, for the kids. I don't know how, what you refer to it as. I think what would be excellent would be to look at seeing if we could do a um, community garden. There's a big plot sort of on the eastern side of that park where a lot of sun shines, so we can do community gardening there, I think is one idea. Um, I know, speaking to residents in the area, that there's an accessibility issue with getting into the park. Both those roads on either side are very busy. I would love to see a blinking light or a speed bump, um, or look what we can do to improve access to that park more generally. Um, but also I would like to, if I get elected, I'd want to reach out and actually talk to folks and see what they want. Um, basketball is not a sport for everybody. Um, community gardening isn't something for everybody. Um, so I think we could do a lot of creative things, but I think it's important to get the community involved as well and hear from them. Okay, John? Well, as as we all know, it is, it is a small park, Shana, and, and there's a, a limited amount of things you can put in there. But um, uh, I drove by there the other day, and uh, as a matter of fact, the basketball court is done. Okay, it's not lined yet. But um, I think um, things like extra landscaping, maybe a few more trees, um, maybe shrubs, bushes, um, increased uh, play area for the kids. Uh, as Joanne said, not everyone is a, is a basketball player or a basketball fan. So um, you, have, you have to think of the smaller kids also, maybe, some, maybe extra swings, things like that. Okay, thank you. Got that one done? So, uh, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> doing it again. <laughs> I circled it too and I said, Jack, I didn't want to mess up. Uh, I'm not doing well tonight, uh, Jack. Well, you directed it to the two of them. That's what we're oh, trying yeah. to do on. To okay, so I did want to go also ahead, Jack. hear what Jack's. Truth be told, I don't know, I don't know uh, 
how I could how I could beat Counselor Lally on that. But uh, <laughs> um, I do I do have to say the money that we've received for this park uh, and for the playground is all grant money. So and it's for a very specific item. When the city receives grant money just aimed at a park, uh, we received four hundred thousand dollars for Walker's Playground uh, before, it was around December, right? <coughs> Counselor? Yeah. Yeah. So when we received that money, we, uh, you know, we accepted the money and then there were meetings about what to do with the money and the, you know, the residents are brought in and things like that. Uh, if we get money like that, if we have the opportunity to, you know, really start transforming the look of the park, I'll be out there with letters myself letting them know. Uh, in terms of traffic, we're working on public safety and making sure kids are safe, not, around, not just around the park, uh, but in the park as well. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Can I just ask a question? So my understanding, and I just want to put it on the record as well to recognize everybody equally, um, my understanding was that the city did pay 10000 for the basketball court and that the state money was about thirty five grand. So just a correction on that. Do you want to respond? Yep. And in addition to that, the, um, the, uh, the Brockton Redevelopment Agency, the BRA, uh, is contributing $50,000 to the playground. Yes. Uh, I, I, should, I should have clarified. This, I'm talking about you know, a certain amount of money aimed at you know, money with no particular construction in mind, just we have this money, what, what would you like to see it spent on in this park? The money for the basketball court and the money for the playground were sent to that. They were earmarked Time. for that and it's specific items. John, do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, one thing I'd like to add, there's been some talk about fencing in the park and I think that's a bad idea. It, uh, it, it creates the, the, the notion that um, the park is not accessible to everyone. I like Joanne's idea of uh, perhaps, um, you know, speed bumps around the park or, or, or um, uh, traffic lights or things like that. But um, fencing in the park, I don't think it should be an option. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to move on to Steve's next question, and uh, I'll direct it first to Jack, then Joanne, then John. Uh, the council has uh, explored using the uh, Mass Water Resource Association as uh, agency, rather, as a secondary water source and found that that's extremely costly. Would you support the mayor's proposal to buy the Aquaria water facility to cure Brockton's water compliance problem? John first, I mean Jack first, I'm sorry. All right, um, the Aquaria facility provides us a lot of opportunity. Uh, the patch of land that it is on that we would be buying has space enough for a second Aquaria plant and all the, you know, all the necessities uh, we could be looking at, so, you know, right now it's capable of producing uh, only a couple million gallons, but we're looking at over 10 million gallons if you actually put both of those plants in. The problem is the expense. Buying the plant right now as is, is quite a bit of money, and we would be, you know, paying these employees. Uh, you know, but that's the, you know, that's the question. It's it does seem to be a better option than the MWRA. The prices the MWRA quoted us at the city council meeting were prices for right now. We don't have, we, we have another 12 years before we would be signing anything with the MWRA. Those prices would, would explode. And that's, that was just the price for piping. We have to pay to go through everybody's yard, pay to go through different towns, pay for the water. The uh, cost would be extraordinary. So you would favor the mayor's plan? I would like to see if we can get the price lower, but Aquaria seems to be the better option for right now. Okay, Joanne. So I've worked in the water sector for over 10 years now, so I'm quite familiar with desalinization um, and water supplies to urban areas in general. My concern is that nobody's really taking a long-term view on the security of the water supply in Brockton. There's no question that we need a second source of water. There is not enough water in Silver Lake to sustain the city, especially with the kinds of development that we're talking about. But nobody has actually sat down and compared all the options. So people at the moment are comparing pineapples to steak subs, basically. 
Um, nobody's looked specifically at the cost-benefit analysis of the MWAR, our MWRA option under the scenario where we would partner with Weymouth and Union Point and try and reduce our costs and split the need to connect into Braintree halfway with them. So if you look at the cost benefit of that scenario in particular, that all of a sudden looks a lot more favorable than just looking at MWR in general. So I think we need to do more to look at what the options are across the board and what's best for the city in the long term. So you would support the mayor's plan? I would support whatever is most cost benefit beneficial. And at the moment, I haven't seen mm -hmm. a solid case either way. Okay, okay. John? Yeah. Um, you know, if the vote, the vote came up today, I'd, I, would, I would vote no. And, and the reason is that $78 million is a lot of money. And um, to jo Joanne's point, I don't think we've explored all our options, either with M and WRA or uh, other companies or uh, other sources. Um, Aquaria has a very poor track record. Okay, Jack mentioned they're capable of pump pumping 10 million uh, gallons of water a day. Well, the one crisis that we did have here about three years ago, I think, where the East Bridgewater uh, main line broke, um, they were unable to provide a one-day supply to the city. And we ended up uh, buying a very costly bottled water uh, instead, which cost the, uh, <clears throat> the city extra money. So um, their, their, their track record leaves something to be desired, and I think you need to know exactly what you're buying before you go out and buy it. Um, as I said, $78 million is a lot, a lot of money, and it's interesting that uh, we're, we're, now, we're now buying it at a sale price where it was $88 million a few, a couple of years ago. Okay, Jack, did you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, just something I, I wanted to add. Okay. Uh, we have looked at uh, partnering with Weymouth. Not only have we looked at partnering with Weymouth, we've also looked at uh, bringing in Holbrook. So all three are splitting the cost of the pipe. The concern is still paying for, you know, to cut through people's property and paying for the water itself. Um, in terms of Aquaria, Aquaria is cu currently able to do uh, closer to three and a half million. Uh, 10 would, upwards of 10, around 14 would be if we added the second plant. Um, this is, you know, that's uh, the, this, the price now, 78 million would be, uh, it would be much higher if we waited until we had to renew the contract. I would like to see a lower price though. Okay, Joanne, would you, you, did you want to add anything? I'd just like to say that I haven't seen those numbers and I would love to. I think that's one of my issues um, it generally is that it's difficult to access information um, as a resident in Brockton. Um, I'd love to see those numbers and then I can make my decision as well. Okay, John? No comment. Okay. okay. So we will move on to the next question from Shana Barnes. Great. Um, as you all are probably aware, uh, the Councillor Lally's predecessor, State Representative Michelle Dubois, she would always uh, say that Ward 6 had the highest growth of single family homes in the, the city. Um, so how would you particularly encourage that momentum and maintain it, uh, especially as we go through different kind of you know, difficult fiscal times uh, federally? statewide, municipal, uh, locally, how would you maintain and encourage people to come into Ward 6, buy single family homes and stay? Um, that would be John first. Okay, um, I, I think to encourage people to come in, and uh, especially younger families, I think we ha have to have a good business base first. And um, I don't think we, the city has done enough to look into uh, abandon the vacant properties to develop businesses, either um, for multi, even for multi-use purposes, for commercial, for retail. Um, and uh, at the end of my street, okay, I live down the village and I have my entire life, there's a huge uh, factory complex and uh, there are some small businesses in there right now, but I'm wondering whether at some point that privately owned complex, the owner would be uh, willing to sell, sell to the city at a good price, and we can develop that land. Um, that's the Spock Street area. I mm -hmm. think you're, you're familiar with it, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the old Brockton Soul and Plastics building. Uh, there are some small businesses in it there now, but uh, there is also uh, other abandoned lots on Spock Street that we can develop businesses. Okay, uh, Jack would be next. 
All right. Uh, I like the question. Uh, Ward 6 is currently 95% single family homes. Um, it's a trend that leads to a lot of uh, fantastic neighborhoods, quiet areas. You know, you can let your kid out and uh, you don't really have to worry. You know, you'll know he'll be with the neighborhood and with the other children. Um, in terms of abandoned buildings, uh, one thing or one, one tool that, uh, that we have as counselors is we're able to really follow up with those buildings. We can't make people act on them. But I've personally, uh, you know, worked with the Board of Health and the building inspectors to, you know, follow up to find out who the actual owner is, to pressure them to take action on their properties. Uh, in terms of the city actually foreclosing on the property, uh, that is a very long, very, um, yeah, very, very long, painful process. It takes a long time for the city to actually take the property. And then there's a one-year right of redemption, where even if you're remotely connected to the owner of the property, you have a full year to come in and uh, pay off the debts on the property, and the property is yours. So even after the city forecloses on something, they have to wait a year. They can't, they can't just let it go. But we do have uh, you know, things in place that I would like to see stepped up. Okay, thank you. And uh, Joanne? So I think people come, whenever people consider moving into a new home, they're looking at, if they have children, they're looking at the quality of the schools. That's obviously important, something we need to maintain in Brockton. They're looking at the beauty of the surrounding area. So we need code enforcement to make sure that <clears throat> there aren't um, illegal cars on people's driveways. Um, we need to look at um, owners of apartment buildings who don't keep those apartment buildings to the standards that they should and what we can do about that. I think those sorts of things are the things that families look for as well as the parks too. Like people want places where they can go out, dog park, children's park, basketball court. I think those are all important. Okay. Jana and I are smiling at each other because we have a private joke about a dog park, but we'll, yeah. we'll tell you that another time. Yeah. It's very private. Okay. Apparently. Here we go. <laughs> so, thank you. Kim. Thank you. Um, we'll go to Steve with the next question. Uh, now that marijuana has been somewhat legalized or basically legalized, would you favor drug testing for elected officials and department heads? And do any of you smoke marijuana or use drugs? Interesting. Okay, we'll go to Jack first. Well, I think it's still illegal for me. Um, <laughs> I do not smoke marijuana. If, uh, if anyone wants, wants to drug test me, see if I'm lying, they're welcome to try. Um, no, I, I would be, I'd be fine with it. If somebody came up and they, they wanted to drug test elected officials, they wanted to uh, drug test anyone currently involved in the government, that's fine by me. You're not going to get an objection from me. Uh, the only difficulty might be trying to work it into union contracts. But otherwise, no, uh, no complaints here. Okay, so next would be John. Steve, I don't use any drugs, okay, any controlled substances of any kind, okay. I, I do, um, I do uh, enjoy a cocktail once in a while, okay. Um, but um, to answer your question about drug testing uh, elected officials, and um, definitely, I'm definitely in favor of that, okay. Why, uh, you know, why in the private industry do we drug test <clears throat> and run quarries on people? when uh, we can't do that for elected officials. I, I would definitely be in favor of that. Okay, and Joanne? I'd have to disagree with both my opponents. Um, <coughs> I believe that drug testing is an assault to my personal liberty. That's probably a little bit um, extreme for somebody who um, is more of a moderate. Um, I do not take any drugs. I do not smoke marijuana. Um, but I do believe as long as you're performing your job and you're behaving in a professional manner and there's no reason for somebody's integrity to be questioned or their activities outside of work, then I believe it's a, it's a, it's a private issue. Would, you, would that go for alcohol as well? If, you, uh, if it's social drinking that's not interfering with your work, that should totally be reasonable. Um, if it's interfering with your work and there's a question about alcoholism, then I believe it's, yeah, then that's a totally separate issue. Do either of you want to weigh in on the second part of Steve's question? Okay, <clears throat> so we will go over to Shana's next question. No, I, 
I have, actually have a question for you. So I have one particular question for each of them. Could I do that instead of have, asking one question for all three? Um, no. Haven't done that before. I'm here to shake it up. Um, <laughs> what about do you folks object to that? I have no objection. Fine. Okay, then we'll do it. Okay. Yep. Um, do you want to call the who's first? Um, first would be Joanne. Okay, so uh, Joanne, in your literature, um, you say it's time for action. Um, that's your slogan. So what inaction are you referring to of the current counselor? So I'm not referring to a specific inaction. I'm saying that I think there's more we can be doing. Um, for example, we are currently looking at um, turning private roads into public ways. Mm -hmm. I believe that we can look at some of the other cities that have looked at streamlining that process to make it quicker and easier to do streets in bulk as opposed to one-on-one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. Um, I think that we can do more as well to um, build collaboration between the departments so that we can get stuff done in Ward 6 like the parks and playgrounds. It's been, like I said, I've lived in Ward 6 over 30 years and only now the park's getting improvements. Um, so it's not a specific inaction on Jack's part, but I believe we can be doing more and we can do be doing better than we currently are. You want, I'll let you respond. I just wanted to touch upon the private way thing. I know, you know, I've been talking about it, people have been talking about it. Uh, Ward 6 currently has uh, around 72 private ways, a little more, a couple streets more. Uh, the reason they're not done in bulk is, is uh, basically uh, financial. In order to become a public way, there needs to be an accepted street plan on file. Many of these streets do not have an accepted street plan. The engineering department only has the money to pay for one or two surveys, and that's citywide, uh, throughout the year. So I'm currently working, uh, went, uh, what is it, Wentworth has a uh, land surveying program that we're working on it. Uh, but that's, that's the financial concern. It's we're doing as many as we can. John, do you want to weigh in on that at all? Yeah, um, by, by far, uh, going door to door in, in Ward 6, and I've knocked on over a thousand doors so far. Uh, the number one priority has been the roads, the infrastructure, uh, the condition of the roads, uh, and to a less de lesser degree, uh, poor street lighting. So, um, you know, Jack said, uh, and, and, and I get it, I, I understand each counselor, or each ward counselor has only allocated a certain amount of streets or linear footage per year per ward. But um, if, those, if, those, uh, if those issues um, of streets not being accepted by the city are, are true, then I think it is the sitting councilor's job, and it may take years, but uh, we need to start moving that, um, that, pro that, uh, that process forward, okay? And that's part of my uh, progress plan. Uh, you, you, need to, you, need to, uh, you need to find out what it takes to, to make those streets recognized, and those folks are paying property taxes also, so they deserve the services. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on. The next question is for Jack. Okay. Um, counselor, your literature says um, to m make a better Brockton. And how have you made Brockton better in your first term? Uh, well, a couple different ways. You know, I've returned every call that, you know, people have placed to me. I've worked with everyone who reaches out. Uh, I know the city council has, you know, voted to approve the money, and it's it's happening slowly. You'll see it. Uh, I know on North Quincy Street, uh, we've brought in LED lights to help, you know, replace the street lights and to help address the the lighting concerns. Um, and I've worked, you know, really as as best as as best as possible to address a lot of these problems. You know, as I said uh, in my opening, some of our biggest concerns are uh, infrastructure public safety and fiscal responsibility. Uh, the more roads we make public, the more mileage of public ways the city has, the more money we get from the state and federal government to pave roads. Um, you know, we've done things like we've, uh, I've, I've gotten uh, the money Brophy and Phillips working on the Woodland Park development off of North Quincy Street. Uh, they promised money for a playground 16 years ago. We got them to pay for it. And uh, I hand these out to everyone I see, uh, and don't hesitate to call me if you have any questions. Great. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Mr. Drusinskis, um, you mentioned in your opening statement that uh, you need, we need better, that Ward 6 needs better representation. What 
has your, or what has Councilor Lally been lacking in his representation of the people to and on the council thus far? Well, um, one problem, okay, just to um, negate what he just said about returning every phone call, I've talked to several people where uh, they have reached out to the counselor and uh, he has either not returned phone calls um, or, um, or has taken a long time to return them. Um, one specific example is uh, up on Sully Road in Brookfield, there was an illegal asphalt uh, operation going on and um, I guess several residents, according to what I've heard, ha uh, called the counselor. Uh, I don't know whether he returned the phone calls or not in that case, but uh, nothing, nothing got done as far as that illegal um, asphalt operation out of a private residence. And finally, uh, Councillor Lodge, when, when Farrell stepped in, and you know, within a week, uh, the operation ceased. So, Jeff, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that. Thank you. Um, only one call was uh, placed during that entire interaction, and that was me calling one of those neighbors. I did not receive any calls about that. A lot of the work was done through email. Things take a long time, uh, especially when it comes to businesses operating inside of a residential home, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure, I'm sure you know, Counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I got the ball rolling on that and we got that started a long time before anything even anything even took effect. Um, I, know, I know what you're talking about, I know the area you're talking about. Uh, for the same reasons that they require a lot of evidence before they shut that down, uh, you know, the same, same reason they require that is the same reason they're not kicking your door down and busting you for an, uh, an asphalt development company. I don't have one. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have to call code enforcement. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it, it took a while, and it started going, and the 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 call counselor Farwell, of course, is very very strong on code enforcement. Uh, was a big help, but the timing I would Time. say was more coincidental. Time. Thank okay. you. Thank um, you very much, I'm Mr. Just Moderator. Gonna, I'm just going to let uh, Joanne add if she wants to sit, address that issue at all. Nope. I'm okay. okay. Okay, so we are going to go to Steve. Okay, this isn't so much of a Ward 6 issue as it is an issue right here where we are now in downtown Brockton. Brockton has a homeless problem. And the shelters and centers for the homeless that we have now don't address the problem because most of the homeless people are addicted to either drugs or alcohol, and you have to be sober to get into these shelters and uh, these programs that we have, the, the uh, different uh, overnight housing. You have to be sober to get in. They don't want to sober up so they don't get in so they sleep outside. Um, as a counselor, what, what, what can you do to cure this problem? This, is, this, is a, this makes the city of Brockton really look like a second-rate city. What can you do to cure it? Would be John first. Well, Steve, I think you, I think you have to reach out to, uh, to whatever agencies, whatever services that are out there to, to, uh, to address the addiction problems. Um, I don't know. I, I think this. I think this city should take a, a partnership with these agencies and uh, help these people out. I mean, if you're addicted to substances, uh, everyone knows it's like you know. Uh, I, I, I've never had the experience in my own family, but I've seen people uh, try to quit smoking, for example, and it's it's really tough. You can't walk away from it. So um, you know, you have to get these professionals involved. Um, with uh, with the uh, with the uh, the addicts, the, the homeless addicts, and perhaps that would help cure, cure the problem. Okay, next would be Joanne. Uh, it's definitely a huge problem. Um, I was at the Montello Business Association meeting a couple nights ago, and it was the issue that businesses were talking about. Um, and some of them are have gotten to the point where they're considering leaving, and that's the last thing that we want to see happen. Right. Um, I think that John is right. We need to do more to collaborate with um, the nonprofit organizations and the churches and others who can help us with this. I also think we need to work better at a state level to bring in community coordination because a lot of these homeless people are not always from Brockton. They're from outside communities as well. Um, I think we can do a little bit more with outreach to raise awareness among the homeless of what their actual options are. I know sometimes they might be aware of one place that they may go, but they'll say, 
oh, well, there's never any beds there, so there's no chance I'll get in there. There are other places they can go as well, potentially. Um, so I think we need to um, coordinate and collaborate better on the issue um, and definitely prioritize it if we want to keep businesses in Montello and okay. the city. Thank you. And Jack? Uh, right off the bat, up, uh, upwards of 50% of all drug crime committed in the city of Brockton, you know, all arrests made, uh, upwards of 50% of people arrested are not from Brockton. Mm -hmm. Brockton is used as a center point. I mean, uh, you know, you, your deal is in Stoughton and you're in Abington. What a, you know, where, where else are you going to go? You're going to meet right in the middle. Um, the city has a, a program called the Champion Plan. If you need help, if you have an addiction if, and, uh, and you've reached the point where you know you, you, want, you want to fight this, you need help, uh, you can go to the police station and you know you say you're here for the Champion Plan. Uh, Brewster Ambulance will take you to a facility and a volunteer will sit with you until uh, the city and the volunteer agencies that we work with uh, find you a bed in a treatment facility. Uh, more needs to be done about the drug addiction and the homelessness and you know we're, we're searching every avenue for help. Uh, all the answers that the three of you just gave all assume that the people want help. I'm going on the assumption that they don't want help. They, they, they like doing the drugs, they want to keep doing the drugs, they like being drunk, they want to keep being drunk but they're still out there and they're still sleeping on the streets. What can we do to people who will not accept treatment? Okay, we've got to be careful with time. 30 seconds each. Um, John first. That's a real tough question, Steve. You know, I, I, you know, at that point, I think you'd have to get law enforcement involved to, to move these people along. Um, you know, addiction is a tough thing. Um, an addict would... The, the, the steps an addict would have to take would would be uh, he or she would have to would have to admit they have a problem first, and if they don't admit they have that problem, then you're sort of at a dead end. Your your options are really limited as far as uh, getting the people off the street. Okay, uh, Joanne. Uh, definitely a tough issue. Um, I think law enforcement does have to play a role in keeping these people moving along, um, but I think we can also make it less hospitable for them to remain where they are. A lot of them, for example, by Park, Speed, Park Street under the bridge, um, sleep there because it's, nobody goes there. There's no pedestrians, it's quiet, it's dark, the lighting is bad, the street's not great. If we improve that, there'll be more traffic, there'll be more people, they might want to find someplace better and quieter for themselves. Jack. Yeah. Uh, I agree that you know, we need to at least, you know, keep people moving. The, you know, the area around North Main Street where Father Bill's is, is a mess. You know, you take somebody down there, they're not going to want to come back to the city. Uh, we've reached for the first time in a while uh, 200 officers in the Brockton Police Department. Uh, the district attorney has moved his office uh, and we've got an additional 25 state police officers. Uh, we need to keep up the pressure. Walking beats, community policing, and clean up the street. Time. I can't. I, I have a question. No, I can't. We've got to do closing statements. I, I have, have a question. I just wanted to share with them one more thing about that homelessness. I need the time for the I'm sorry. Um, so just real quick, reminding everybody that there is another candidates <laughs> forum that's going to happen Monday night, September 11th, at the Ashfield School with these three candidates. I will be the moderator. That will be with people in the audience. Okay, I got closing statements to do, so we can do the 45 minutes. So the way it was, the way it was drawn was John was first, and you have up to up to two. Okay, thank you. Uh, once again, my name is John Drzinskis, and I'm running for the Ward 6 City Council seat. Um, I think, first of all, I want to say that it's very important that uh, you vote in the parliamentary election uh, September 19th. A lot of people don't think a primary or pre preliminary election is very important, but it is in this case. As you can see, there's three candidates here, and the top two go on to November 7th. So um, I think my, my background uh, with, with life experience and uh, with volunteerism in the community and the uh, ma many volunteer groups in uh, civic and community and church groups that I belong to uh, play into into being a good counselor. Um, uh, I just consider the the uh, counselor's job as uh, an extension of my volunteerism. So I respectfully ask for your vote 
um, on September 19th and hopefully on November 7th. Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, thank you, Shada and Steve. Okay, and number two is Jack. Well, I uh, you know, want to thank everyone again for the support I've received so far, both at the door and at the ballot box before. Um, you know, my phone number, I'm always accessible as a counselor. My promise when I ran in 2015 and a promise I'm keeping till to, uh, you know, through today is I will call everyone back within 24 hours. Uh, my phone number is 508-410-0330. Uh, my Facebook is Jack Lally. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, I've considered it a, a, you know, a real honor serving as the counselor for Ward 6. Uh, I feel we've you know, made good progress. We've achieved a lot. Uh, we've paved you know, quite a few, uh, well, usually counselors get one road a year paved. Uh, we're on pace to do four in two years. Um, I've also been endorsed by the uh, Brockton Firefighters Local 144. If anyone has any questions, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for your support, and I uh, hope to have your vote. Thanks, Jack. And Joanne? Hello, everyone. My name is Joanne Zygmunt, again, running for Ward 6 City Council. I respectfully ask for your vote on September 19 because I feel we can do better in Brockton. Um, I have over 10 years of nonprofit and business development experience. Um, when people say things to me like, oh, it takes a long time or, well, the process is complicated, that's just not good enough for me. Maybe I have high expectations. Um, but I really think that we can do better um, in terms of where the money's going in the city. We can do better at letting people know what's happening in the city. Um, and we can do better being the kind of community I think that we all want to be where families um, can stay in the neighborhoods for a long time and have their kids grow up and even take their homes. Uh, I do have a website. It's joanneforbrockton.com. That's J-O-A-N-N-E for Brockton.com. Um, and you can also reach me anytime on 508-521-9891. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And I just want to thank everybody for hosting and moderating this evening. Thank you. Thank you. John? I just... Real quick. Uh, it's going to be quick. I forgot to give my contact information. Do it. Okay. Uh, my phone number is area code 508-586-8599. Uh, if email is more convenient, it's johnd27 at verizon.net. I do have a Facebook page. Uh, my website is, is under construction right now. Uh, I'm revising it and updating it. Okay. And Thank you didn't use all your time, so that's just fine. Thanks. Shane, Thank I, I have a, a, like a couple of seconds if you wanted to say what you... Oh, yeah, um, it was just a statement, just about the homelessness. It's just, it seemed like a lot of the correlation was homelessness and addiction or drugs, but also a lot of people are homeless due to mental health issues. So I just wanted to put that out there as you all develop your plan and attack this issue. Think about that as well. Yep. Okay, and I have less than a minute, so I just want to thank all the three candidates in Ward 6. Uh, Ward 6 uh, continues to have the tradition from the last election of being very civil, and I look forward <laughs> to seeing the three of you on Monday night, and uh, we'll also be there to record that as well. So thank you for participating, Excellent. and thank you all for putting your name on the ballot. You watching Brockton Community Access, uh, stay tuned for more debates. We have the Ward 3 debate, the Ward 4 debate for council in the preliminary, and then we will go on to the general election. Do not have a city councilor at large preliminary. We will do that. Uh, this time it's 8, less than 16 in the studio, so it will be a lot more fun. And then we'll have candidates for mayor a, as well. So stay tuned for Brockton Community Access channels 9, 12, and 98. And thank you to my two panelists. Have a good evening.